Hey there, I'm Johnny May from Piano with Johnny, and uh, today I'm here with Robert Estrin. He is a fantastic classical piano uh, teacher, piano player, and we're here at his piano store. And uh, we're here today because I have a lot of students who often ask me, hey Johnny, how do I increase my strength as a pianist? Like, I get so tired, you know, when I'm playing the piano, how do I increase my strength? So uh, here to answer that question and show us some of his awesome tricks is Robert Estrin. <laughs> All right, it's a real pleasure. I'm glad to uh, get to know some of your followers. And, Absolutely. And of course, you've got a, a monstrous technique at the piano and also a solid classical background. That's right. So I know that you can share a lot with this. <laughs> and I want to know how much you agree with my perceptions. People always, of course, want shortcuts, don't yeah. we all? Absolutely. And you know, the reality is, just like if you wanted to develop to be like a weightlifter, mm -hmm. you're not going to get there quickly. Mm. Um, but the good news is this. So mm. many people think that they have to work on painful exercises for hours a day in order to get good mm -hmm. and to get to strength in their playing. Right. But I don't know how you feel about it. I feel like if you can play some hard music yeah. and that's in your repertoire, just playing through music a great deal. In fact, if you play hours a day, almost anything, you're, you're going to develop strength. Mm. Do you find that to be true? Absolutely. So you're saying time is the big thing. It's not the secret exercise. It's not Hannon or mm -hmm. Cherney or Scales or Piggios. <laughs> you're saying, no, play the songs you love. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, there is certainly a place for exercises because after all, if you're playing Hannon exercises, up and down the piano and yeah. you're spending even 10 minutes, you're going to play more notes in those 10 minutes than you would playing 30 minutes of almost any piece of music mm. because music almost always has slow parts, fast parts. And you can gain, of course, with musical etudes mm. in the classical repertoire. Spend, uh, you know, half an hour working on a Chopin etude, right. you're going to get as big a workout or more than you will working on Hannon or Czerny. Mm, now, there are sense. certain exercises that I think are fundamentally important, and I'd love to get your perspective on this for sure. ragtime, yeah. which is your specialty, <laughs> and that is scales and arpeggios just seem to me like, like if you were uh, a physicist, you'd want to know all your mathematics right at the top of your, right. you know, and it seems to me that scales and arpeggios are that to music. Right. Uh, what, how does, much does that translate to ragtime? Do you think that's intrinsic? Oh, sure. I think scales and arpeggios apply to every style. You know, mm -hmm. ragtime. You know, ra and, and scales and arpeggios are interesting because they facilitate two things. There's the technical part, and then it's also understanding we're in the key of E flat and just exactly. that theory knowledge. So. so yeah. So I think that. And you know, there's a few exercises I can put some links on here yeah. of uh, things, just things with thirds that really give you a workout and more than that independence of the fingers, yeah. like. Something like that. Wow. That was fantastic. <laughs> I've never heard anything like that. Oh, yeah. So you're going major, minor, diminished, augmented. Exactly right. So, and then you go up die, you know, half step at yeah, a time. Yeah. And believe me, when you're done with that, you know you've done something. Wow. So it's great to have yeah. a few things in your in your back pocket right. that if you want to really get a workout in sure. a very short amount of time. Right. Of course, though, like sitting down and playing a scriabinator. <laughs> You're going to get a huge workout playing yeah. a major a classical piece right. or going through some rag time. I'm sure that you get just as much exercise as you would from a variety of actual just charity or something like that. So I'm a big believer in playing music right. and musical etudes mm. and utilizing exercises as an adjunct just to, to first certainly get familiar with the scales and arpeggios. And if there's specific techniques that you want to improve, like mm -hmm. trills, for example, mm. to be able to develop trills, octaves, mm. there are certain specific skill sets that if you just have an octave here or there in a piece, you'll never get the opportunity to really work mm. out, you know, to be able to play octaves. So you I work see. on scales and octaves, or even just, I have other octave exercises. So you can isolate one technique and develop mm. that one technique. That Sometimes it's a big, time saver yeah. instead of just hoping you cover that in the course of your music. I see. That's really helpful because a lot of mm -hmm. people think, well, there's just this one technique and it's like there's so many. Ragtime is its own thing. That's right. The thirds that you did earlier is its own thing, the mm -hmm. octaves. And so you're saying, hey, let's pinpoint, let's do this one 
you know, maybe it's a problem spot for mm -hmm. me as a pianist. We'll focus on that spot, right? That's absolutely right. Okay. And fundamentally, there are three aspects of technique development. Okay. The fingers, obviously, everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. And you could develop the, the fingers to a, a dazzling extent <laughs> and still not have any octave technique because the yeah. octaves come from the wrists. Oh, you bring, that's such a good point, especially mm -hmm. for ragtime. Yes. There's a lot of amazing classical pianists, and then you say, do the jump, <laughs> and they can't do the jump. <laughs> right. right? Unless so, they play so. Liszt, maybe they. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, right. Or Rachmaninoff or something. And then the last thing is the arms. There's some massive technique that you absolutely need to use the arms, okay. like in big Tchaikovsky chords. <laughs> to do that with the fingers yeah. or the wrist you yeah. just need so i think knowing which technique you're utilizing mm. is perhaps half the battle being wow. able to identify what parts of the body to use for a specific technique and generally speaking the faster something is the less mass you're going to use you're going to use your fingers for the fastest things your wrists for things that require speed okay. and power and mm. finally when you need the massive amount of power that only the arms can do <laughs> use the arms yeah right now, then you do the Tchaikovsky. <laughs> so what, what i hear you saying yeah. is okay um the, these exercises are maybe at a higher level right where there's this one problem what would you say to a student who's maybe a beginner pianist like mm -hmm. okay I, I i just want to get stronger just playing anything right. i just i just I just feel weak. Well, for example, if somebody isn't even up to being able to play scales yet, because the, after all, the fingering is a real bear at the very mm. beginning yeah, to sure. know because your hands are doing different things from one another, mm -hmm. which is, of course, the plight of pianists <laughs> anyway. <laughs> right. So at the very beginning, the hand and exercises are terrific because yeah. they're simple, repeated patterns. If, okay. you can, if you can play the first measure, you can play the whole exercise okay. because it's all the same repetitive pattern, so you don't have to spend hours learning it. Mm. You can spend five, ten minutes learning it because it's the same pattern over and over right. and have like literally hundreds of notes at your disposal. Mm -hmm. Learn one a week. After you do about ten exercises, you should have enough strength to, to delve into scales and arpeggios. Fantastic. For wrist, mm -hmm. I really recommend a very simple exercise where you just play a scale at 60 ticking on the metronome, one okay. note to the beat. And you get the idea. Wow. Notice it's all wrist. Yeah, it's all wrist. And then yeah. two on each note. Dun, dun, yeah. dun, dun. And until you know, you go to six or seven, and yeah. and boy, you get a great workout. Wow. And it delineates the wrist because the mistake that so many people make, they think, oh, they can use the arm, yeah. and they go slowly. And yeah, the arm can go slow, but you'll never get the speed. Mm, I see. You have to develop the independence and right. the strength of the wrists. Well, one of the most mm -hmm. important things as a pianist is having loose wrists. I can't, mm -hmm. you know, I, how many times as teachers we've said, hey, you know, light, loosen up your <laughs> wrists. And so that's great. Just, just getting that movement there is, Absolutely. is important. And that flexibility and the fluidity. Okay. So now to recap. Yeah. You know, for anybody out there, you wanted to develop strength, just play a lot. You'll get a <laughs> lot of rewards. It doesn't have to be painful. Use your exercises as an adjunct, and I think you're gonna do great. It's been a real pleasure talking with you, Johnny. Thanks, Robert. It's been great to All have right. you on the show, and we'll do more of these. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, guys, it was fun to have you, and uh, we'll look forward to doing more of these with Robert Estrin. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this interview. A couple more things. Uh, Robert has very kindly included some links on finger strengthening. You can find those down below. Also, if you want to watch Robert interview me on ragtime music, you can click the link here on the screen. There's also a link down below. And lastly, you can find my free mini lessons and arrangements on my other YouTube channel, Piano with Johnny Lessons. Uh, and that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.